Hello, good evening and welcome to our live stream of jewellery. I just wanted to give it a few minutes just to see how many of us can um, log in tonight. So in the meantime, I'm Emma and this is my daughter Isha. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and welcome. So let's just give it a few minutes. Now let's see because you don't want to oh look at my face tonight let's turn it around on some jewelry okay so tonight i'm going to do a little bit of a focus on our solid gold and we're going to go with tonight oris We've got some lovely ends from Oris here. We've also got in the background, which I will zoom into, got some juniper. And we've also got some anatom metal here as well. Let's get this into focus. Bear with. <laughs> okay. So, have we got any questions from the audience? Who's out there? Make yourself known, say hi. <laughs> I don't know how we can okay let's make a start shall we so the jewel we've we've got showcased tonight is from our um lifetime guaranteed brand so these brands are um those that are association of pierce professional piercers association approved Let's turn this round, shall we? So you can get a bit of my face while I'm going through this. Hello. Hi, Mark. <laughs> um, so we have got some 14 karat gold. We've also got some 18 karat gold as well. And I wanted to really just run through some of the some of the bits and pieces about why what makes this jewellery so special, why it's most importantly safe to wear when you're um, in, a, in a new piercing or even in a healed piercing as well. And of course, what, um, why, it, why, why is it so special? You know, it's, it's certainly not your custom, you know, bulk standard jewellery you can buy anywhere, you know, anywhere online. It is the best you can get for your piercing, which is most important. And we do not want to be putting any kind of junk into our bodies, that's for sure. So what shall we start with? Shall we go with Oris? So Oris is, um, comes, all, comes to us all the way from Russia. Let me turn the camera around. Oops. So we've got some little ends here. We have got, oh look, we've got a few more coming in. <laughs> hello, Neil. Hello, Ellie. Hello, Zoe. Um, so, so what, what, kind of, what kind of gold do you like? It might be yellow gold, it might be rose gold. Let's get this into the picture a little bit better. I um, do apologise for the lighting. We've had a little bit of a work around, but of course artificial light isn't always ideal. So we have got these kind of ends. Um, a lot of people come into the, st uh, into the studio or into um, online and they're not necessarily quite sure with what they're looking for. It might be something, say, for a present, for a gift for somebody, and it can make it very challenging knowing what kind of jewellery is suitable in terms of the, the, you know, the curvature of the ear. And we have this fantastic model ear here. In fact, let's use this one instead. So, of course, something like this here, and I've got my little pointy tool. Here we go. Um, something like, see, I'm trying to do this. I'm not even seeing what I'm doing at the same time. Always good. Here we go. So we've got a lovely Mystic Topaz cluster. Now, there's a few areas where this is going to look fantastic. So it could be around the curvature of the ear there. Say so the heat on the heel, outer helix pierce, and we call that, or the oracle just there. Um, I'm getting a question. So is that a dagger? Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. We've got, because um, all our designs aren't just for women, you know, a lot of sparkly bits and pieces. We've got here the Swarovski crystal, the liquid set. We've got the opals, mystic topaz mentioned. But um, we've also got some styles that are unisex, really. So something like this, the dagger. Um, again, it would suit more of a piercing, say, in the, the oracle around here, um, perhaps in the lower lobe, and certainly around all this flat area, also known as the scaphe. So we've got those daggers in 
um, yellow gold, rose gold, and of course white gold as well. So quite universal, really. Um, because of course, my Valentine's isn't just about women, is it? It's about the men. We mustn't forget about the men. Um, so what else have we got? Now, one of my favourites here, and the lighting doesn't do it much justice, really. This here is the 14 karat rose gold lotus. And you can see here, again, not so easy to show, but we've got um, Aurora Boralis. So the rainbow um, Swarovski there, a flat set. So it's quite nice to wear again on the flat area of the ear there. So um, flat helix, really all around this area here, or the scafer. Um, this would make a beautiful present for somebody, of course, this Valentine's Day. Um, any particular pieces? We've got some people just joining us. Any particular pieces anyone would like to see? Because I've got my willing assistant here. And um, what we thought we'd do is um, actually curate one of these ears. So what I thought is perhaps five or six ends. It could be from the Auris range. Let's pick this up. Um, from the Auris range, it could be from Juniper as well. Um, I thought we could actually stylize an ear, which could make it a little bit more interesting, couldn't it? Because eh? sometimes, of course, we all have um, an idea of the jewellery we like. We find it on the website and sometimes you just really can't get the best look at the jewellery until you see it in person, or perhaps a little bit more of a 3D version. So all of these are Juniper. Juniper jewellery um, based in Canada. And they are an utterly fantastic organisation. Um, really proud to say that I'm part of the pro team. Um, and like a lot of the jewellery we, 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 um, we stock, of course, all APP approved, so very safe to wear in healed and healing piercing so you could have any of these um initially as a, a first choice for your piercing so what have we got we've got some questions coming through here um so hi rick um some clusters you can wear in a top helix or in the conch is that for the um curation i was i mentioned earlier i don't know if you came in a little bit late let's have a look so isha's gonna have a little go at pushing in some ends on the ear. So let's have a go. Shall we go for some Auris? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is that a snake or a tentacle? That's a good question. Here we go. So this is called the sea witch. I see it as an octopus. Yeah, more of an octopus tentacle, really. So, of course, a piece of jewellery close to my heart of my marine passion as well so that would look fantastic again in a, in a helix um even in a conch piercing and for those of you not too familiar with conch we've got to write it all around the bowl of the ear really that's the conch area i mean the sea which probably would better suit um a, an area in the ear which is larger and can accommodate because i think it's about 10 millimeters in length um so okay let's have a go we'll pop some bits and pieces we'll go for yellow gold isha i think we'll uh yeah. let's try a few so have a go we'll go for the um clusters i'm leaving it to each <laughs> to choose sorry <laughs> okay um let's just turn this back a second and um so something else i um i wanted to uh talk about as well which has completely gone from my mind now which is always good isn't it on live <laughs> see we do this a lot can't you I'm sad about Brexit too, my lovely. Um, really, really sad. Um, a lot of customers are finding it very challenging. And of course, the delays that we're finding with um, jewellery orders is, is, is also extremely frustrating. But um, there we are. Unfortunately, it's the way of the world right now. So Isha's doing a fantastic job here of um, choosing jewellery unaided. <laughs> <She's just laughs> That's great. Um, so I could tell you a little bit about whilst we were waiting. Um... <laughs> Sorry, you struggling. No, How about one of those lovely um, Elsa's or Anna's? Um... We go yeah. right up here. Yeah, I reckon that look good. So the trick is, of course, with any um, kind of. Let me just show you. In fact, 
this is where you get me double chin so I don't know how well this is going to come out because um, the camera, of course, on most devices is always so much better, isn't it, when it comes to having it on the back. So with a lot of this jewellery, um, all of the Juniper range is threadless. So when I say threadless, I mean it's got a threadless pin. It just literally pushes in um, to the piercing or the, sorry, the, um, the back, which I will demonstrate shortly. Um, and it makes it a very much easier way of fitting jewellery. Um, the jewellery with all of the Juniper Auris um, range is um, really strong pins and of course all guaranteed as well. Um, so how have you got Anish? What have we got here? So we have got, what do you think? So you're going to have a little go. So what we thought we'd do, if anybody is particularly interested in a piece that we have a look at this evening, I thought it would be really nice to, um, Isha's going to pop a link up. So you can have a closer look at the jewellery itself um, online and perhaps later on have a little browse. Lots of different names. Um, of course, this video will be available on the Facebook page as well later on. So you can always whiz through and um, see if there was anything you missed. So we have here, we've got the Juniper Tribead. That's not very clear, is it, that one? We're going to have to turn the camera around, I think, just so you can get a better idea. Much better. So the Juniper Tribead, um, 14 karat yellow gold and a Swarovski bezel set gem in the centre there. And of course, all the Swarovskis are laser etched as well, just to demonstrate um, the genu genuine um, Swarovski there. Now, have we got back on the website? There we go. Oh, so it is the Elsa. Yay! <laughs> These are beautiful. So, um, and of course, anybody with kids under 10 really are going to be, or will have been, um, had them fixated on the Frozen film. Um, and very much inspired, these beauties have been by the film. So this is the Elsa. And as you can see, you've got four beautiful um, Marquis uh, Swarovskis there as well really really pretty i mean again you can have this on a helix a, um, a scafer you could even have it down here on a lobe or a stacked lobe um it's it's a large slightly large piece but it's definitely centerpiece and star of the show there and then we've got a gorgeous trinity or tribead or trio um down there in the, in the lobe as well so there we go and whilst we've got the camera this way around um we can just i can just do a quick demo on the on the jewellery. Oh, we have a slight technical hitch. That's interesting. Yeah, I don't know why it's doing that. Let's not worry about that right now. That shouldn't be a problem. We can work our way around it. So bear with. Let's just get a threadless end. Yeah, not sure why that's doing that. That's okay. Why don't we write it all down and then we can post it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Always good to have a technical hitch, isn't it? Um, so I have got here, and again, the camera's not going to do it justice because it's just zooming into my face. I've got two librette posts. Now, we have got, that's not too bad actually, is it? We are getting a reasonable amount of quality there. So in my left, left hand, I have got a threadless post and these are librettes or flatbacks as they get called. And for, you, for many of you that follow the page, you'll have seen I've done videos on these already, just to demonstrate really how the jewellery fits together. Let's pop this down. I don't know if we'll get the angle here. Um, it's a little bit low down, isn't it? I don't want to pick the phone up because I'll get all wobbly with it. So there we go. You've got the base of the jewellery is fixed to the, the bar itself and that um, comfortably sits against the back of your earlobe the back of your helix or any other cartilage piercing that can accommodate a librette. There are two different types of librette and of course here we only talk about internally threaded posts as well and when I say internally threaded um, does what it says on the tin the thread the screw fit thread if I can get that to zoom in the screw fit fit thread is on the inside of the post so what happens is that you'll have the end you'll screw it in and when you put the jewelry in and out of the piercing it won't actually damage the, the delicate tissue inside the, the piercing the fistula or the piercing channel so really comfy rounded edge um, and a much better quality piece of jewelry um, we've also got the threadless post or push fit librettes as they get called as well and if I just show you with this lovely names completely gone from my mind. 
Juniper. Crown set juniper. Yeah, this is a um, yellow gold juniper. It's a crown or a queen set in. Sorry, can't remember. So as you can see, this one has a threadless pin. And the pin in the pin is a very slightly tiny little kink in it, which allows it to just very, very, very cool, carefully just slot into the actual librette post and very gently just push it in like that. There we go. Now it's really important with threadless posts that you, when you push it in, you always push it in nice and um, centrally. If you push it in at an angle, you're going to bend the pin and you're going to weaken it as well. So as you can see, there's a little bit of resistance with that. When I'm pushing it in, and when I'm pulling it out and that gives you the confidence that jewellery, whilst it is very simple to fit yourself, it's going to stay there in the piercing. Whilst it's always good to check piercings um, on a regular basis, just to ensure that obviously part of your daily routine, your cleansing, um, it's always good just to check you've got that resistance there and that it's going to stay in there. But threadless jewellery for me really is the way forward. Um, I know many people are very, very much... Um, um, keen on on being threaded all the way but for threadless small smaller pieces up to this size really um, the arnet and the lightweight size um, threadless is perfect if you're going for really large pieces you probably would want to go for a threaded end um, but we're talking you know sort of really large heavy titanium ends really of course gold is ever so lightweight hi jerry are we talking about this one? Yeah, it's beautiful. Look at that white opal. Um, we are under artificial light, but of course, um, in daylight, it's absolutely stunning. Um, it is all synthetic opal, which has its many benefits. Um, the main one being that it's um, safe to autoclave uh, in the piercing studio. So I can use these um, for an initial piercing without the worry of the heat and, of course, the um, the uh, damp nature of the autoclave actually um, causing problems with the with a natural opal. So um, for the for the new people that have just joined us, um, it was the crown set opal end. Thank you very much, Isha. Um, I'm just just really running through a few bits and pieces. Really, hi Rebecca. <laughs> Lovely to see you as well. Thank you. Um, I if anyone has any particular um, jewellery from our gold range. We're just really looking at Auris, uh, Juniper and um, Anatta Metal, which I'll come on to shortly. Now, this is a little bit lower down, this one. So let's have a quick look. You're right there. <laughs> OK, I think I'll have to hold this one up. So here we go. We've got some um, 14 karat um, rose gold. I absolutely adore rose gold. I'm wearing it myself in, in both my ears. Um, it's an extremely flattering colour and um, for me it really does flatter my skin tone. I never thought it would actually until I tried it and it was, it was yeah, quite revolutionary really. I've always been a white gold lover but now I've definitely transitioned to, to rose gold. So with Juniper Jewellery, all of the, um, and with all of them in fact, all of the ends that you see here are, are available in um, yellow, white and rose gold. So um, if we don't have it in stock, we can get it in. With Juniper um, from Canada, we've got about two, two to three week wait for any custom orders. If there's anything in particular you wanted to, um, to order. With Auris, um, it can, again, it can be a matter of a few weeks. Um, and with Anatta Metal, we're looking at probably around about four to six weeks, really. And here is Anatta Metal. Now, I really do need a backing for this, really, don't I? I should really see how we can do this yeah that might work actually yeah there we go without getting the i like the purple one yep isha is definitely a sleepy lavender aren't you that's your <laughs> thing there we go so sleepy lavender being that beautiful um purple there and of course it's the it's the purple the blues and and the the pinkish red hues that you get in the light and that's a metal to these wonderful hearts here as well. And again, these are all, um, so these are all for 18 karat gold in the Anatta metal. These are all screw fit. Here we go. And you can see we've got a collection of um, all three in the golds as well. Um, Anatta metal with their threaded posts, they have a, a special lock fit, blah, 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 lock fit mechanism um, in their matching posts as well which makes it a lot more of a secure fit in your piercing. 
So there we go. Lots to see. So that's we've done a few on the um, ends. I thought perhaps we could have a little look at some rings. So this is the chevron. Now, um, a lot of the times when it comes to seeing a seam ring on display, sometimes it's quite hard to visualise, isn't it, how these are going to look. Um, so this is the chevron seam ring with a single um, beautiful Swarovski. If I can get that to zoom in. Sorry about this. Um, now, this looks amazing in a conch piercing. And it's a very tiny ear I have here. And a, as you can see, a well-used model. <laughs> it's so big. Oh, dear. Um, moving on. Um, and we have... Can you see how this would fit? Now, really, it would need to be... This is really... Almost looks like a child's ear, doesn't it? But So, really, you would need to sort of size this up accordingly. But how these are designed to fit is just literally through the conch piercing there. And then to lie really nicely against the li alignment of the ear. Sorry, I'm not even holding it properly for you there. So it sits down like there. And of course, with a, a stacked lobe, with a few more piercings there, it looks it looks pretty cool, doesn't it? Really like that. Um, with a lot of these rings, um, the seam rings, again, are really, really good jewellery to fit yourself as well. Let me show you. So this is a Starfire ring. Oops, let me get this to... Thanks, Ish. Um, so this Starfire, um, again, single Swarovski. Check that out. Looking good. Mm -hmm. um, I love this. It really has a little bit of edge. Um, I'd wear this in a daith or doth, depending on how you pronounce it, or in a, even in a septum piercing, actually. They're pretty good. Definitely for those of you with a bit of edge, I would say. Um, so with the seam rings, um, these are 14 karat gold, and they have literally... They sometimes get called seamless rings as well. So without they, they're a little bit more, um, as I said, much more easier to fit than, say, a ball closure ring where you sometimes do need tools really to fit them. But it's just a question of very, very gently, just a matter of bending them just a tiny amount, not too much, and then literally fitting them inside the piercing. You probably want to go a little bit more than that, really, just to get them in the conch piercing. And then when it's in, again... Just back very gently, just align the ends up. See if I can get this more central, it's probably a bit better. I'm not looking through the phone as I'm doing this, which takes a little bit of getting used to, doesn't it? There we go. So that would be how you would fit a seam ring. And there we are, beautiful, absolutely beautiful that is. I like that one. Yeah. I've got the, um, I've got the raven. I wear the raven in my dace piercing. Um, and this one, look at this. Love this. I always think of ant uh, like an ant, it's the antlers, isn't it? Of deer antlers, I always think of that. And again, perfect in a dace or um, on the side or in a septum piercing again. And just like the starfire, this one's a seam ring as well. It's slightly lighter gauge. This one, this is a um, an eighteen an eighteen gauge or one one millimeter for those of us in the UK. So. Is there anything else that anybody else would like to see? Have you seen any pieces online that we would like us to showcase a little bit more? Um, so I've got here, if I can, oh, I've got me in the reflection there. <laughs> it's quite good, isn't it? Um, all right, let's have a look at some comments here. Hi, Karen, just seeing your, your question here. I would like a hoop for my helix, but whenever I wear a hoop, it aggravates my piercing. I've had the piercing for many years. Let's just turn the camera around. Okay, so um, helix piercings are probably one of the worst for getting aggravated at night. Um, I know from my own personal experience, there are certain styles that you just can't really wear. Um, some of them, sort of long term, sorry. Um, some styles you have to wear short term and maybe take out when you sleep, but there are some that you can actually wear at night. I find that um, the best sort of styles to wear are those with less detail on them and the ones that, are, I haven't got mine in today, but the ones that are more um, snug fitting to the ear itself. It's always best really, if you can, to get a, a perfect um, fitting through a piercer really, to, to be certain of that. Um, 
Another thing can be material. So it could be the type of jewellery you've gone for. It's not just a star, but it could be the quality of the material as well. Um, certain jewellery, um, things, silver, for example. Silver, whilst it's very pretty, I'm going to hold this up because I can see. <laughs> I was warned about showing my double chin earlier. I think it was a bit of a joke, but <laughs> yeah. Um, I... Um, so sorry, I've lost my train of thought. Going back to um, rings, silver. Um, whilst it is a beautiful material and can be absolutely fine short term, we have to be very, very cautious with it. Unfortunately, silver is a big no-no for anybody with a nickel allergy. Certainly anybody who, um, in wearing it in a brand new piercing, big no-no. Um, and in a healing piercing as well. Silver, unlike the jewellery we've got here tonight, is full of many impurities nickel, um, copper, tin, all kinds of things which help bind the, the alloy together. Um, when silver is in a piercing, and of course, depending on the pH of your skin, silver can actually um, naturally leach into the skin. Um, you know, uh, some people when they've had allergies, if they've had watches or brass straps or belt buckles, and it can leave behind an almost um, like a greeny grey colour on the skin. In a piercing, that can be a permanent darkening of the skin. So it's something you've got to be really careful about. So really, it does depend on, going back to your question, um, Karen, um, it's really important to make sure you've got gone for really good, high quality material. So making sure that the jewellery is um, implant grade and, of course, APP approved. So Association Professional Piercers approved. So Industrial Strength, um, if for Titanium, Industrial Strength, Leroy, um, Brain's Gone Completely Dead, um, Auris, Juniper, <laughs> yeah, thanks, um, Anatom Metal. So all of our branded jewellery uh, with a lifetime guarantee, APP approved, would be absolutely fine material-wise. And of course, so it's the style, the material, and also it's your anatomy. So having something that perfectly suits your anatomy. Um, I like to, personally, I've only found, I found it much easier to wear a small snug ring um sometimes the um like the eternity rings some people find they can't wear them at night because when their body warms up the piercing can spin through and then there can be a little bit of irritation from the faceted gems so all kinds of things can really play um really play into the factors of, of the, uh, causing the irritation really so karen if um you're more than welcome to send me an email if you've got any more questions, something you want to find out a little bit more about, and perhaps we can knuckle down and really um, determine the cause, really. Um, sometimes it's not just one thing. It's like when people come in, they've got an irritation bump on their piercing. Um, we have to really take things back to basics. We have to look at um, their lifestyle, have to look at any medication, you know, really take things back. I'm not saying we have to necessarily do that, Karen, with you, but um, certainly with irritation bumps, it's something we would have to, to look in, in more detail. And it's always really helpful to go in and see your local piercer. Um, whilst I know it's really not possible at the moment, um, you know, I'm, I'm happy to help anybody. If you just want to send in an, an, e send in an email um, and send me a photo of the piercing in question. So I'm very mindful. I've um, uh, missed a few comments. Have I missed any, Isha? Because I'm trying to jump this question. Not about, um, a bar, bars in date piercings. Okay. Any bars? Oh, hi, Jerry. Um, oh, stuff. I've lost all the. <laughs> I just said this Sorry, it's <laughs> um, Okay, Jerry. Any bars for Dave Pearsons? I haven't. No, I haven't got any on me today. Um, we have got. Um, yes. I tend to, if I'm perfectly honest, I do tend to prefer um, rings and. Um, circular bars seam rings that kind of thing jerry a lot of the bars we stock like the neo metal can you pop a link on are we logged in on that no, one that's all but i've written, okay. it, I've written it down we'll put, why don't we put it all in the comments yeah the links. that was our technical hitch we're not logged in on the other on the ipad for some strange reason anyway um we've got some neo metal bezel um forward facing bars but they're really more suited for eyebrows and um rook piercings jerry um, I, if you want it, it depends what you wanted to go for. If you wanted to go for something, say more of a classic style, polished ball, um, but most bars will tend to have a forward facing aspect and what you'd find, Jerry, wearing it in your date piercing, you wouldn't necessarily see it so easily. I mean, you'd see it right from the side, um, but you just wouldn't have the sort of the, um, like 300 degree kind of visual, but neo metal bezel, 
um, curved bars are the ones really that I'm thinking of. So we'll pop a, pop a link in as well. Um, just having a quick read through. Oh, lovely Karen. Yeah, I'd love to meet you, but you know, who knows? One day you might come to Dorset. <laughs> um, okay, so let's have a little look at some more jewellery. Anybody fancy anything in particular? Go on, let's see if you've got any particular ideas for jewellery. Did we have... We've got the white gold as well. How about that one in there? Have we done that one yet? And some less stone on that. Yeah, let's go for it. Oh, you can look right up my nose in this angle. Let's turn it round. <laughs> okay. So, we've got some more of Auris here. <clears throat> this is our Russian jewellery. And um, with Auris... What I particularly love is you can get some real specialist stones, as you can with Anatta Metal. So here, the Mystic Topaz, and, and some of you will know that I'm a particular lover of the Mystic Topaz. We've got, also in Mystic Topaz, the Royal Lilac. And this light just isn't doing it justice. We tried the ring light earlier on, but it was far too bright. Um, you've got purples, greens, and pinks in there, which just aren't showing up, sadly. So, yes, the Auris, any of these designs can be custom ordered in um, any particular stone. So here, is this the Firebird? I think it could be. Um, the Firebird here, we've got all, just a beautiful array of Swarovskis here. We've got mint green. It's just not showing up the colours, really, is it so well? Um, Isha's just, uh, yes, the firebird, firebird with a mixed CZ. Um, let's have a little look. So this one, you could wear in a, in a helix again. We've, we've talked a lot about helix piercings, actually. I must find some jewellery um, for other piercings. I adore these ones here. This is the cup metal grisant edging, I believe. And we've got the mint green Swarovski with the white oval. Look at those beautiful little pinks. Really, really, really gorgeous. Oops, that didn't work, did it? <laughs> now, um, for those of you who want to look up any of these names that I've mentioned, um, you can always go onto our website and there is a search bar in the menu and you can just literally put in any word um, and it will bring up all of the tags associated with that particular piece of jewellery, sorry, all of the jewellery associated with that particular tab. Um, so we've also got here, you can just about make out, there you go, without the light directly on it, you can see the Mystic Topaz there. Look at that, it's my fave. So this is the Elizabeth end, and there's a few different Elizabeth ends here we have as well. We've got the liquid, now this is quite something, this is a liquid set, Swarovski. In fact, I've got a little pointer here. I shouldn't be using my fat finger, should I? So liquid set Swarovski, did you know that's a thing? So rather than having it faceted where it's cut, lots of little edging to really reflect the light, this one is actually smooth, but it still captures quite a lot of the light. And then all around the edge, and I think we've got something like, is it 13? Yep, nope, how many have we got? Yep, 13, gosh, I remembered, I can't believe it. 13 tiny little Swarovski faceted. Um, gems all around the edge there. So again, another statement piece, really. That 14 carat there. Um, yeah, so all of Oris, yep, 14 carat. Um, and we've got Mystic Topaz, little... Um, in Oris, they call this the, th the three leaf. Um, it's like a trio or trinity. But this is quite cute, isn't it? Look, you could have this, again, hanging from a lobe, oracle, um, even a Ford Helix, actually. This would look pretty cool. Or Tragus, or Tragus, however you like to pronounce them. So what else have we got? Very very in keeping with the time of year, isn't it? So there's Auris. Um, oh, I can't remember the name. Kucha Heart. I'm so sorry about this, guys. So many different names. And a lot of this jewellery is coming quite new. The contour. Yeah, golden. The yeah, Amour contour end. So we've got these in rose, yellow, and also in the white gold as well. So, right, should we do another should we do another ear curation, shall we? Come on, guys, any particular designs? Let's go for, did we go for, we went for Juniper did last you? time, didn't we? 
So let's try. So these are all our Oris ends. If we, I tell a lie, these two are from Anatometal. So we've got genuine to um, turquoise there in the, the trio. And the, oh, I can never pronounce this. Farata. Farata. <laughs> yes. Farata. Farata. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. This again is a real statement piece for a conch, really, or, or a scafer as well. Um, so, um, any particular, who, who likes, who would like to make a suggestion? Let's go for five ends and sherry likes the opal in the bottom left okay let's go for that then is that the blue is that the um this one here sherry or are we going to go for the opals on this one maybe yeah vw signs <laughs> vw signs for beastie boy fans oh do you know what mark i don't think i have but if you'd like to make a custom order i can send you in the direction of our form <laughs> Okay, so let's just give it a few more minutes. The first one, okay, so let's pop this one. Let's take this one out so you can have a good look. So this is a rose gold. And let's have a look, where should we pop this one? Should we pop this in the or let's pop this in the oracle? I do apologize, those are my elbows that I keep catching on the table. It probably really reverberates through the through the phone. Okay, there we go. Check that out. So, should we go for a rose gold? Ga oh, ca gap. Yes, definitely, Mark. I agree there. Definitely a gap in the market. Okay, so what else have we got in the rose gold? Let's go for, I think. Sorry, I'm taking your job away from you here. That's okay. Should we go for the lotus? I was going to say, go for the lotus. Yeah. Okay. So, I reckon... Oh, we could go for, yeah I think we'll put it in the scafer actually so again of course this is obviously a silicon ear takes a little bit of doing I'd like to say that my body piercing isn't anything like this <laughs> yeah, yeah no okay I think it would sit I mean it, the, the placement with a piece of this kind it would have to be on a, and some people have got the most perfect Flat ears there, absolutely perfect. And it would suit, sit, just sit there perfectly. How many times can I say perfect, eh? Okay, so what else have we got? Any other? We could go for a tiny, we've got, because also we, wanna, we really want to think about the gems. I mean, it's really nice to have a little bit of a theme going. I mean, we've got the rose gold theme, which is good. Um, I wouldn't necessarily want to, Personally, again, it's, you know, it's everyone's preference. But what I like here is I absolutely adore um, Opal and Swarovski and the Aurora Boralis Swarovski here and the white Opal really do go nicely. I'd probably leave it there with a the colour. Um, I'd probably want to go a little bit more kind of universal, really, and perhaps go for a... Let's have a look. What have we got in rose gold? Shall we pop a dagger in, Mark? Just for you. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, it's gorgeous, isn't it, Vicky? The lotus. I'm going to pop that in. I reckon around about there. That can work really nicely. I mean, we could always pop it in. Let's see how it looks in the tragus. And this is the fun thing about this. You know, you don't have to go through having the piercing, really, do you? You can just fiddle about and get an idea. I think I pop it there. I really do like them in the um, um, oracle. So oracle being the perfect little groove there that many people have around the pinner of the outer ear. Um, and that can sit, oops. Here we go, it's because I'm doing it on live for video. And you can choose jewelry that really complements people's anatomy. Definitely, yeah, really, definitely. I um, and sometimes you know, we all see things differently, don't we? We can very easily get kind of swayed into um, going for jewelry that that perhaps we've been quite used to wearing um, for many years. But um, going in and seeing a piercer and really having a consultation and finding out what kind of jewelry that they see you in could be completely different to the kind of jewelry you'd even thought about initially. So. 
what else have we got any others do you want to have a little look should we go for a have we got an old rose gold contour let's have a little look so i just thought i'd put the camera on isha there <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she's trying to hide <laughs> okay um sorry i'm we real meany aren't i are we going for one brown um, we could mix some brands, yeah, why not? We've got um, Oris here, but there's but no I'm reason we could do. We could pop the... That's quite sweet. Yeah. The bees, actually, have been really, really popular. I absolutely love these. I will answer. I see I've got a question from... Hi, Emily. I will answer that shortly. Um, so, yeah, just to get just to get an idea, really. Um, there's no, there's no right or wrong way of doing things apart from, I mean, in terms of style, apart from obviously it's got to be anatomy dependent. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily want to put this bee right in the, the groove of the, the outer ear there because that just wouldn't sit right and all it would do is distort the ear. So it's really important to have a really good think about how it would fit. On our website, um, we do list the external dimensions of all the jewellery um, sometimes if there's a little bit of a rise to the jewellery that will be that will be listed as well um, and of course the gauge of the jewellery in terms of the the thickness of the post required for the fitting and things like that but it's always ever so important and sometimes you really do need somebody to help with that can you grab me that ruler Which one? um that paper one that's it <clears throat> so um of course it's not always easy to do this on your own is it but it's Sometimes even if um, somebody's able to get a ruler and just measure measure across, having a look at your ear from the side, having a look really um, from we're in, in all these different angles to really, really determine whether the piece of jewellery will accommodate, um, be, whether your ear, sorry, will accommodate the jewellery, really important. Um, we're quite unique in that we do um, offer returns on our jewellery, but we're very strict um, with those returns. Um, all... Ear, all body jewellery, as with earrings, are personal, um, how are they classed legally? Is it personal good, personal items? So because of the nature of the, the you know, the, the hygienic nature of um, of keeping the, these, these items hygienic, we don't, once the hygiene seal is opened and the jewellery is removed, unfortunately, we don't take the jewellery back. Um, so, but what we do do is we send the jewellery out and it is in a, uh, a plastic um, sealed uh, enclosure to allow you to have a really good look, to measure it, see it in person. Of course, because things can look quite different in person. Sometimes, you know, screen resolution can vary as well and that can make quite a difference. So, um, as I said, always making sure you, you know, measure up the jewellery, use the dimensions listed on the website, always really helpful. And always also get someone else to help you if, if needs be. Um, in the studio, we have these fantastic wands, um, courtesy of Juniper. And if I can move it so it actually goes into focus, this is the um, Sea Witch mark that you were asking about earlier. So um, in the studio, it allows us to really sort of, you know, keeping the jewellery away from the anatomy, of course, just, but just to hold it up really to get an idea. And again, that's another benefit for coming in um, for a consultation to get a really good um, idea of how it looks and to also have it sized um, appropriately for the piercing. So there, right, Isha, do you want to have a go at taking those off? Let's have a look at some questions then. I will try and do my best to turn it around. <laughs> I love that question about the Beastie Boys. Good band, but they mock. I don't even know if they're still going, are they? Um, so what material, Emily, hello, Emily, lovely to see you. Um, what material do you advise for a person that is allergic to most metals? Um, yeah, and of course that makes sense, no problem. Um, so um, a lot of the, I, th I think I, um, earlier on I talked a little bit about um, nickel, nickel allergy. Let me see if I can just put my phone on something rather than, I don't think I can really, can I? Well, that one. Yeah, I'll just hold it there, because otherwise be I'm just wobbling the phone around as I'm talking, very mindful. Um, so um, nickel allergy is a very, very common issue, and up until, in the 90s and noughties when I was um, piercing, we used to use surgical steel as an implant material. And then in 2004, the nickel directive came into force to protect people, and it also made us realise that actually steel was not suitable as an implant material. And so as a consequence, we now use um, titanium or niobium 
Um, 14 karat gold and 18 karat gold, and all of these are perfectly safe, providing they have suitable mill certificates. Now, this is really, really important um, because our market is absolutely flooded with jewellery. There's so much jewellery you can get from all around the world. It may be listed as titanium, but it's not necessarily good quality titanium. There's an, um, an analogy that's, um, or a, a way to sort of describe this in simple terms, really, which I think is very effective, it came from a fellow piercer. And you can, when it comes to baking a cake, you can have all of the ingredients, um, but you might, not, but and you, but you might not make a good cake, or you might have. Um, I'm not getting this quite right. <laughs> it's because it's late. Um, you can have. Um, here we go. One ingredient might be off. You can have the no. You can have the you can have the ingredients to make the cake, but you can still make a cake. That's it. It might not be the right cake, but it will still be a cake. And it's the same thing with titanium. Now, titanium um, has what we call mill certificates. And these are certificates to, to, to really guarantee the quality when they are proper mill certificates, um, to guarantee the quality of the jewellery, the ingredients that we use to put it together, the way it was cooked, if you like. Um, and, and this shows us that this piece of jewellery that we have, which is, because um, of course we can't date necessarily stamp the jewellery, it can be hallmarked for authenticity in the case of gold, um, which is weighing over one gram. Um, but titanium is a, is a really challenging one. So really, Emily, in, in answer to question, um, if you, um, if you are, have an allergy to nickel, um, the itching, the, the, the inflamed irritation, um, it's likely you can't wear silver. It's likely you can't wear nine karat gold. Um, and it's likely you can't wear sur surgical steel either. But so titanium from the APP approved brands, so Auris, Anat um, uh, sorry, Anatometal, um, and all the brands we're going through this today with this um, this demo, um, they are all safe for implant, safe for long term wear, and safe for use um, when um, implanted at a piercing studio. I hope that helps. Um, there are there are a small number of people that are, do have an allergy to titanium. It's a very rare allergy. Um, it's normally diagnosed through tests um, and through your doctor as well. Um, I do find, and I can, I can, I know I can speak for other piercers as well, that quite a few people will come to us um, expressing what they believe to be an allergy to titanium. And when we get down to um, really dis determining um, the the issues associated with this um, allergy, and with the, um, like the symptoms and looking at the, um, the the effects, that kind of thing, more often than not, it can be sometimes something as simple as the aftercare they're using on their piercing or it could even be um when sorry when it's healing or it could even be um the, the, the jewelry type that they're they're wearing so lots to really think about um so i would can't stress enough really um if you have any uncertainties about the about the jewelry that you're wearing or perhaps any uh, symptoms that your body is displaying do please get in touch or or when lockdown allows, um, do book in with your local piercer for a consultation. I hope that helps, Emily. <laughs> yeah, a bit of a long-winded answer. Um, okay. So yeah, there's lots to think about. Um, I think um, you know, over the last few decades, there's been a hell of a lot learned about body piercing. Um, I mean, I think back into the late '90s when I started, there was there was a lot to learn even then. Um, you know, we it was still a new craze, and I think I quote I I mentioned on one of our Instagram posts um, a little while back. I remember, and I'm sorry to say, my dad saying to me, "Oh, you'll grow out of it." And of course, twenty years on, I'm still still here enjoying it and absolutely adoring, getting to create smiles and 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 create piercings and 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 advise people on on really beautiful jewelry that they can wear and of course a lot of this jewelry is 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 for a, a lifetime piece it's a piece you are going to have forever so um it's always good to have um a little bit of inspiration isn't it okay so how are we doing what's the time god blimey time flies doesn't it when you're having fun that's for sure um hello keith <laughs> I won't embarrass you anymore. <laughs> um, so, anything else? Any questions anyone else would like to ask? Um, I think I could do a little bit on downsizing, actually. Let's have a go. I'm just going to adorn 
a piece of an ear, this ear I have here, ear, ear, and just talk a little bit about downsizing. So, let's see if I can pop it in a tiny. Question is, is finding the piercing which has, is the right one? What's your favourite part of the job? Says Emily. My favourite part of the job? <laughs> well, I would say Curation. definitely meeting people. It's, um, I think we've all really discovered how sociable and how gregarious we all are. I'm not saying I like to cuddle all my clients by any means, <laughs> just a few, but um, it's it's meeting people. It's actually there's a really there's something I really do enjoy. Um, I get quite a few clients come to me, and I really noticed it in the last in the last. In fact, it was last summer. I had quite a few, and I think um, a lot of there was probably a group of friends that perhaps were coming in and um, they were, I had quite a few women say to me, do you think I'm too old for this? And it's something that I just think is, is really sad that society makes people question their actions in terms of wanting to adorn themselves with beautiful jewellery um, and also to uh, really... Um, Oh, what's the word I'm trying to use? Uh, express us the one, you know. Um, a way in which people can really express themselves, and I think that's really important, and it should be, and it should be important part of um, our lives throughout our lives, really. So it's it's seeing that utter glorious um, happiness when people have a piercing, and um, a it's never as bad as they thought it was going to be, because of course there's a lot of anxiety associated with body piercing. Um, and also them, these particular ladies um, coming away and just being so utterly happy in themselves that they got this piercing um, and, you know, it made them feel good about themselves. So I guess in answer to your question, that really is the best part of my job is, is making people feel good about themselves and, and creating smiles because, um, yeah, you can't really get much better than that, can you, really? So really good. Right, I was trying to. Do you want to see if you can have a go, Isha? Because I, I'm having a bit of trouble. I was looking for a... In fact, have you got those um, other labrettes anywhere in that bag? I think they're all the same size, aren't they? Yeah, so I didn't think ahead, don't worry, because I've got oh. one. Thank you. Um, so what I was going to do was have a get... It's probably easier for me to just pop a threadless in, actually. Well, I'll get that one. The Rigel, <laughs> or the Regal. This one's pretty. Yeah. Let's pop this in. So whenever um, you get a cartilage piercing, most piercings, in fact, should be sized accordingly to the anatomy. But um, cartilage piercings in particular and any oral piercings, which, of course, a lot of us aren't tending to do because of the lockdown, um, we would always use an oversized piece of jewellery. Um, as part of normal swelling um, in the sort of the first, second, really in the second week, you start to notice that the, the jewellery the piercing will swell um, just to increase blood flow, um, the collagen and elastin that tends to form as well. And we would also use, always use, see here, just as an example, this is a, an outer helix. It's not a very good quality photo, so let's turn it around. Um, an outer helix piercing, oh, it's covered in fluff now. Um, we would always use an oversized, I would always use an oversized librette. So, you know, two, three millimetres in size. So, as you can see, you've got a nice bit of space on the bar and there would be a little bit more than that normally and that would allow for normal swelling. Um, within six to eight weeks, it's strongly recommended that client come, returns and gets this bar size down because I expect many of you are familiar, for those of you who've got cartilage piercings, that when you, um, when you knock the piercing... I'm not doing a very good job. Let's pop this down and I can stop moving it around then. When you, um, when you knock this piercing, of course, it distorts the anatomy and what happens is the body naturally produces an excess of collagen and elastin, um, aka scar tissue, and what you can get is this beautiful irritation bump. So the bump may be a lump of um, tissue just around here or around the back of the piercing as well. Um, it depends on the location as to which way the jewellery is being caught. Um, say if, if the piercing was done a little bit on the wonk, it can, can also cause problems with the healing as well. Um, and one of the biggest issues with, with cartilage piercings um, it, uh, is that people lie on them at night. Massive, massive no-no. So if you think 
you're going to sleep, you're lying on your pierce and you're just storting your jewellery, just storting your ear. Um, you wake up in the morning, it's tender. And over time, in no time at all, you get these irritation bumps. So the first thing to do was be within six to eight weeks. Of course, not ideal at the moment because a lot of people have had piercings and then it went into lockdown. Um, but to get that jewellery size down and to really get it um just basically the backing, that's all you need to change at the Brett post and get it to a nice snug fit um, and also steer clear of lying on it. Watch when you're getting undressed, brushing your hair, that kind of thing as well. All can play havoc with a healing piercing. So there we go. That was all about, um, yeah, downsizing the jewellery. I see a lot of people come in um, that have had this piece of jewellery in for a year. <laughs> and, that you know, they've, uh, they, they'll still be big bumps on it. It'll have distorted the piercing. The bar will be, you know, have all these lumps. And all they needed to have done was to get it, get it sized down um, and just to really focus a little bit more on lifestyle really can make all the difference. So you needn't have the dreaded piercing bump, that's for sure. Jewellery can also um, cause problems of irritation bumps as well um uh lower quality jewelry unfortunately when you look closely on a um on a, uh, on a magnifying glass you can see that um the bars it's, themselves can actually have quite a lot of um nicks and and scratches on the jewelry which in turn in in, in really irritate vulnerable tissue as well can you offer any advice on how to help get rid of the bumps um so if a client comes into me in the studio and asks about um, how they can sort out their, their, their lumps and bumps and their irritation bumps, um, we again, I mentioned earlier, we have to really take it back down to basics, really. Um, we need to look at the jewellery. We look at the way that the piercings, um, how it's sitting in the piercing. Um, for example, if this piercing isn't very straight at all, is it, actually? You can see the way that the um, right regal end is sitting on the wonk here so what it would do is it would actually place quite a bit of um uh friction more friction on this side of the of the of the um pier, of the ear than it would at the bottom there so you'd probably find you'd end up with piercing bumps um on on both sides and we would definitely have to look at perhaps a way of perhaps in some cases you can write the piercing you put a little bit more weight on one end than you do at the back but so that'd be one thing looking at the jewelry type um if it's lower quality jewelry a lot of people tend to um buy jewelry for a matter of you know one pound off ebay or amazon and it's not necessarily good quality for the reasons i mentioned earlier um but also um lifestyle so some people um wearing helmets constantly taking a helmet on and off at the moment masks are causing all sorts of problems with a lot of piercings um conch piercings around the back of the ear of course um mask straps getting caught on them one thing i would strongly recommend um with masks um i, I haven't got one here to demonstrate but no um, the knit they've got yeah, no, don't, no, that's okay. Don't worry, Lovie. Um, so a mask strap would normally go around the back of the ear. Um, you can invest in masks where by the mask strap goes around the back of the head. So that, that alleviates any pressure around the back of the ear. But also something I use in the studio when I'm piercing is I will, um, I've got a big pot of paper clips. And for people who are wearing masks, um, I talk about the studio, but of course, when we're open, we're in lockdown, of course. Um, so we, um, I would put the, the mask, do the mask up behind the head. Um, not really showing you very easily here, but around the back of the head, um, at, connect the two mask straps with a paper clip just to do, to do the piercing around the back of the ear. And of course, and then advise not to use masks, but um, sorry, not to use wear masks that do up behind the ear. So that's something else to think about. Also aftercare. Um, and one of my, my big favourite is the Neil Med. Um, so hands up, how many of you have used um, salt water soaks when it comes to healing a piercing? Um, salt water soaks, they, 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 are, they were a, a, a tried and tested methods, method decades ago, really. It was something that um, we did find did work well, but only if people got the ratio right, if the receptacle was sterile. There was so many factors that could cause problems when it came to um, using st um, saline. And of course, it wasn't sterile. Now, um, a lot of people put a little bit more salt into the, to the preparation, thinking that it's going to clean the piercing a little bit more. But in fact, all it does is burn it. So Nilmed, 
This is just literally a fine mist wound wash. It's sterile saline. Nothing can get back inside the nozzle so you're not impregnating the um, um, solution with any airborne bacteria, viruses, that kind of thing. Um, and it's very gentle. It's a fantastic solution. You just literally, you can spray it in any direction and you can just use that once, one, once or twice a day on a healing piercing and your piercing will love you for it. So that's something else with the irritation bumps. Um, so I talked about jewellery, um, uh, lifestyle, sleeping on it, where you not sleeping on the piercing, using a travel pillow, and also, I know there's something else, I can't think right now. Um, hot compresses can be really good, yeah, for um, treating the bumps, but really we need to make sure that we definitely discount um, all of those other factors to make sure that the, the piercing is going to have some help. Um, hot, dry compress can really help boost the um, circulation and to reduce those bumps, but only when work working with other factors to alleviate um, the problems mentioned. So, yes, I think we've pretty much covered a lot, haven't we, really? Um, I don't know if there are any other questions. Let's have a quick look. Um, Vicky, hello, Vicky. Um, your discs for bumps. Yep, we do have some silicon discs that you can use to apply a little bit of pressure on the bump. Um, particularly good right now, given that we're in lockdown and it's not so easy to get to a piercing establishment. Um, the, the, the discs themselves work by... Um, so this is your librette post. So you'll have this around the back of the piercing, say it's a helix piercing, and then you'll have the end piece of jewellery going through the post itself. And just to take the end off, you put the um, the disc, you can have a disc either side of the piercing, what that can do, providing you've got space on the bar, it can put a little bit of pressure and help, help reduce that bump. But again, used short term and used alongside all those other um, factors as well, that can really um, help with the piercing. Um, sometimes you can get a piercing bump on a healed piercing. Um, and again, sometimes it could just be a change in jewellery, could have been going from a librette to a, to a ring. Um, rings are one of the biggest contributors to piercing bumps, unfortunately. Um, the amount of movement that you have with a ring and a piercing. Um, and also, if you think about um, the difference between the two different types of jewellery, you've got... Um, Let's see if I can get this too. It's not going to work, is it? Just wants to focus on my face. Um, so you've got a round, um, cut the curvature of the ring, and then you've got the straight... Oh, my fingers are just too big, aren't they? You've got the straight post. So if you've had been pierced with a librette post, and then you pop a ring in, I mean, the ring can move all over the show, can't it? You've also got the pressures of the edges of the ring on the external and um, the two exit points of the, of the piercing as well. And that can really um, cause problems with the irritation bump. So really, um, librette, librettes for the initial jewellery all the way, at least for at least six months, um, and then a sterile change via a piercer to um, a ring. If you can, leave it for a year with a cartilage piercing before you pop a ring in. Um, I know with my um, various nose piercings I've had over the years, um, certainly the most recent one, every time I popped a ring in, um, I would get a piercing bump and that was within sort of six, seven months of having the piercing. So it really is a, is a problem. Some people are more prone to them than others. Um, and um, it's just one of those things, unfortunately. So there we go. I expect you've probably heard an, enough of me now, haven't you? <laughs> um, before we go, um, I think we're going to wrap it up, aren't we? Because we kind of said about nine o'clock, didn't we? What are we looking at now? Gosh, nine o'clock. Um, any other questions you wanted to ask? Um, before we say good night, I don't know if there was anything else. Let's just pop some other jewellery. We didn't have a close look at the... I will put the links up on the comments underneath the video. How about that? Okay, yeah, we'll do that. So some of the jewellery we've spoken about tonight, um, we'll add those links at the bottom of this post when it when it's um, when we say good night. So let's turn this around. I don't know if we looked at these, did we? So this is blue. These are juniper seam rings. One, one of these is waiting for a very special lady um, to have her day's piercing once we've got, um, when, once lockdown is lifted. 14, all 14 karat gold. This is a starfire. We've got the tri-bead ring here as well. Very bohemian one, this one. Um, we've got bashful. Now, I love this one. This one, 
fantastic for a septum piercing, maybe a dace piercing. Um, just would need to just double check um, the fitting on that one. We've got the um, clicker, the plain clicker, smaller version of the blue, and of course the raven there as well, my favourite, and the um, tri-bead. So there we go. I think we've um, we've covered quite a lot. I hope you found it interesting. I hope um, it's given you a little bit more of an insight into some of the jewellery we stock. It's always nice to see it in person, of course. Um, and I'd love, I really look forward to seeing um, a number of you in the studio in Dorchester um, when we reopen. I'd like to say in March, but um, I'm hoping in April we can, we can get together. Okay, well, thank you ever so much for watching. And um, I'll um, look forward to um, hearing from you very, very soon. And I'd just like to say thank you very much once again for all of your um, custom. I can't tell you how much it means to us and our little business. Um, really really lovely thank you have a lovely evening and we will see you again soon okay take care bye bye <laughs> thanks emily see you soon take care bye